um, who's Lorraine Stanley. Um, so Lorraine's main body of work are pottery pieces, which she describes as erotic works that explore adult themes, something that Lorraine has been advocating for with the right to sexual expression for people with disabilities in her day job. Her works have wonderful titles such as Peek a Boob and Spoony Bump with tactile qualities that she encourages interaction with. For her pottery and working in clay is a means of being grounded and providing escapism while also providing an outlet for emotions. I really love this. She describes the kiln as an alchemist and she sees the volatility of the firing process almost as cathartic in being present and sort of trying to disconnect from the outcome, which sometimes can be quite explosive and shatter works literally in the kiln or change the glazing. The kind of, of obviously, you know, making work in this kind of kiln is quite volatile sometimes. Um, Lorraine also writes poetry, enjoys photography and paper crafting. So I'm delighted to hand over to Lorraine when you're ready, Lorraine. Yay, hello. People <laughs> on the computer screen. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Joining you from my bed. Because um, I work horizontal, which when you're dealing with the subject of disability and sex can give people interesting sort of thoughts as to exactly what my work is. <laughs> um, but I'm a training consultant. Um, a few years back, I created my own company, which is called SWAD, which stands for Sex with a Difference. Uh, and it all came out of the need that I had uh, when I first acquired my disabilities. And I was looking for some information and advice about intimacy and relationships. And I asked for that information from the professionals. And unfortunately, they either didn't know it or were too embarrassed to ask for it. And so I ended up finding it all out for myself. And now I share that knowledge with loads of people locally, nationally and internationally. Um, but my journey, if you can pop up the first uh, image, please. Thank you. So my journey with pottery and sharing it with Outside In actually started relatively recently. Over the summer, uh, I'm very lucky that where I live, uh, there's actually a resident artist that's employed by the council. Um, and she does lots of different art projects and mental health support stuff. And they were running like a six week set of, of a course and to do with like connecting with nature and all about supporting mental health. And I thought, well, I've tried to sort of join art classes in the past and it's just with access issues and my energy levels, it just wasn't possible. So I thought, well, this is gonna be over my bed, on my magic arm, you know, and she said, all you need is like a pen or a pencil and some paper. Um, and that's all you need. So I thought, well, I can do that. And if I don't like it the first week, I won't bother coming back. But I loved it. And um, so now there's dropping sessions every week. And when I can, um, I just join in. And, and it's lovely because I've already picked up from today in this session lots of tips on techniques and mediums I wasn't even aware of, like the last speaker, Kevin, I think it was, was saying about the water soluble oil or something. Um, and I wasn't aware that was a thing, so I might be looking into that. Um, yeah, so this pottery, all right, take you back uh, 20 years. It, it was the gap between when I did pottery at high school and when I got my hands in some clay as an adult. And I was having a tour of my local independent living centre. This was when I lived in a different area. And they were like, oh, we do this and we do that. And there's like crochet and there's the gym. And then they said, do you want to have a look at pottery classes? Yeah, go on then. And what had put me off years ago was this focus on the pottery wheel. And I just couldn't, this is pre-disability, I hadn't, I just couldn't get a handle on it. I thought, well, obviously pottery is not for me. But in that independent living centre, there were people that weren't going near the wheel. They were doing like the coil pots and pinch pots and some slab work. Um, and it just looked like blum and good fun and it was all very relaxed and you came as you were and I thought right I'll sign up for this um, and within moments the, the tutor sort of said well you know I'll give you some coils see what you feel like doing and within moments of having my hands on that clay I was like everything just sort of calmed down and it was the texture of stuff I'm autistic so certain textures I just don't like but clay is really lovely 
because it's sort of semi-solid, it's not too squishy, um, and it's quite cool as well, which I love. Um, so one of my pieces, the very first piece I did, is I've literally uploaded it today onto my gallery on Outside In, um, and that was a love pot. Um, so there isn't an image of that on here, but feel free to you know look at my gallery when the session finishes. And that has lots of love hearts that either you know scooped out or added on. And then I put around it all different words in different languages for love. Um, and one of the words uh, is Hindi for love, and that's actually Kama, which is what I called my daughter, who's now very grown up. Um, so that was the first piece, and then I moved on to other things. Now what we've got on here. <laughs> the image in front of you <laughs> is Aqua Girl and Snorkel Boy, okay? And Aqua Girl and Snorkel Boy feature quite a lot um, in my pottery shenanigans. And um, I actually sought permission from the pottery tutor before I started this because I thought it was a mixed ability pottery session and I didn't want to freak anybody out by the fact that I was doing things that included a sex position. Um, so this was done from one piece of clay, but I literally did a very sort of crude separating out of it so that the two pieces would interlock. So that's not one piece of pottery, it's actually two pieces. So you can lift up Aqua Girl and you can turn her around and she fits in beautifully still with the way her hair flows out. She fits in beautifully between Snorkel Boy's hands. So how I've described it is that the image in front of you now is like the X-rated version, but if you need the parental guidance PG version, which isn't quite so much in your face, no pun intended, then you just turn her around, you know, if the grandkids are coming around or whatever. Um, so talking you through them, unfortunately, Snorkel Boy did lose his snorkel, which I will be adding a, a, a different mixed media snorkel onto him in due course. Um, uh, it was a bit of overzealous cleaning at one point. I think he fell and broke his snorkel. But what I do is the... I try and do the sensory side of things more. Um, a piece we'll be looking at shortly is the, the spooning couple. And for that one, somebody who was completely blind from birth uh, touched it and realised that something about the physique of the lady and that sort of look on their face really brought home to me how important touch is when it comes to this sort of artwork. So certain little bits of Apple Girl have, they're not, I don't feel that they're crude, okay, in the detail that I go into, but they're there. So if you were to touch her, you would feel that she has nipples, you can feel she has a belly button, and you can actually feel down in her nether regions, there's a, a sort of a... a a sort of not ghost-like because that would just be too weird a slight impression as to what might be going on down below um and with snorkel boy you don't get the rest of his body because obviously he's in water because she's floating in water he's in water so you don't see what's beneath the water it also helps when you're not that confident in modeling backs and legs and things like that it's a really good get out jail free card because <laughs> you go oh it's all hidden under the water nobody can see it anyway so um, and the colours, I actually just used two types of colours of glaze. Um, so you've got the sort of aqua blue, which also helps with the aqua blue title. Um, but also uh, sort of flashes of, it was like a speckledy, beigey sort of colour, by the technical term. Um, and I just used that to accentuate certain things. Um, but yeah, that, that was what started me off on this. And when people's faces, when they realised what was going on when it's in the X-rated version, they were like, oh, sort of thing, as if, what is this disabled woman doing naughty pottery for? <laughs> um, and I'm thinking, well, you know, when you go into art galleries um, and, you know, galleries of sculpture and stuff, you will get nudes and you'll get images of, goodness knows what, orgies and the like. So it got me questioning, why is it, it linked in with my sort of day job with the training, is why is it so weird that we might have people with disabilities that are interested in anything related to intimacy and sex? Uh, so then it became a bit of a bigger mission, really. 
Um, can you pop on to the, ne the next slide, please? So this, this is my uh, spoony couple. <laughs> so um, I love spooning. It's one of my favorite things. It's called spoony bump. And um, this is actually apple girl and snorkel boy, but they're sort of on land. Okay, so they're having a snuggle in bed. Um, and what I really like with this is it was from one piece of clay. So I've got my piece of clay and I literally sort of went, did a bit of an S curve through the clay so that they were, they would be spooning. And then I just manipulated it after that. And I, again, I used just a couple of different glazes, but I added lots of texture. So uh, with her hair, there's lots of curly stuff going on. Um, again, with the nipples and he's got his genitals as well. So people can have a feel and it's like, oh, okay, that's a, you know, female type body, that's a male type body. Uh, it also, the, the reason that she's got a cushion under her head is because I thought this is really realistic in that for those of us that have, you know, regular sized limbs, where you put your arm when you're spooning somebody can be really awkward. So I thought, right, well, I'll hide that under a pillow. So, you know, it's just a really realistic thing to do. Um, but yeah, this was the piece of pottery that when uh, one of my fellow uh, participants at the Independent Living Centre, when he came in and he was like, oh, what are people doing today? And he was having a chat. And he, he was asking me, you know, what, what are you doing? And I said, I'll tell you what, before I actually say anything, would you like to just feel the pottery? And he was there and you could just see the look sort of going over his face. And then this big smile came up and he said, is she pregnant? I said, yes, she is. <laughs> So it's like, and go figure, you know, disabled people get pregnant too. So, um, and it's also, I love the curves of people. Um, I love them in paintings. I love them in sculptures. Um, I love photographs of curves as well. I'm a curvy lady myself. So what I do when I'm doing any of the male figures is I visualise my other half's bum, basically. Um, so his bum is now immortalised in pottery as I interpret it. And you can also reposition these. So I really like doing stuff where something that is usually static, you can play around with. And at the session uh, recently, because I'm relatively new to, well, very new to Outside In, and um, it was from the art class that I was doing and the lady shared that outside and we're doing one of their local days. You could pop along and, and ask them stuff. And I believe it was you, Beth, that was, yeah, there on that day. And um, and it was the first time that I'd ever showed my sculptures to anybody outside of like the pottery class or my immediate family. So it was a bit nerve wracking going in. Um, but when uh, one of the other members of the team was taking some photographs for me, took this photograph, he was playing around with the different angles. So we did some different positions of this couple. And at one point he had them. So it was like a V where the toes were down here, but he'd sort of place the bodies out like that. And looking at it on the table, I thought, oh my God, I can see a love heart. And um, so I will be in the future creating a little family of figures that will go in between the sort of humpy bits of the love heart so it will just be like an expansion so I see this as as the start of something and again it's a different angle on things I haven't thought of myself but you sort of look at things you go oh actually that's quite an interesting idea and so I love how how things can be expanded and I like also when, pot when you do pottery there's the texture, but when you add the glaze onto it, then it adds a different type of texture as well, which is the smoothness. And I played around on this piece with the amount of the glaze that I put in certain areas. So for example, um, when you're looking at maybe the boobs or on the lady's thighs, and you can see it looks like it's quite um, shiny, but it's a very different colour from the rest. That was what I was playing around with there. Um, yeah, so, and I also do lots of different couples. Uh, so I will have maybe two men or two women, or what I've said on my gallery 
is that these, all the ones you see here, I'm keeping. <laughs> it's like they're not going anywhere, but I'm quite happy to take commission. So if you have maybe a limb difference, um, something I want to do, but I haven't figured out how to do it quite yet in a way that will stay together, is uh, people that are wheelchair users, because I use a power chair myself. And um, so that's going to be an interesting one to sort of go onwards and develop. Uh, yeah, but that is. You know, I can customize things for for people as well. Uh, can you pop on the next one, please? Right. Okay. <laughs> this is my peekaboo, um, and today I've added a few extra shots onto my gallery, um, to so that you can see everything from a full angle. But I just left it a bit late, so sorry about that. But you can look at the gallery, and it'll be on there. So, um, the story behind this one <laughs> is that. Myself and my other half are naturists, and we actually met in a jacuzzi in a naturist place. And uh, we just got talking, and the rest, as they say, is history. So I was wanting to do something to like commemorate the jacuzzi, and there was also a swimming pool in the naturist club. So I thought, what can I do? And I really like um, my dad was big into those sort of was it 40s and 50s, the seaside postcards, which are you know considered in some places to be quite bad taste these days. Um, but that sort of seaside postcard humour sort of thing was, was my vibe on this. And um, I thought, right, and it just came to me that I must have watched Titanic or something that sparked it off. I have no idea where this came from. But I thought, OK, so we've got this lovely lady who's voluptuous and she's like the sort of echoing the front of the big boats that they used to be. They usually have a, a figurehead at the, at the front of the boat. Uh, you can tell I'm not a boating person, so I don't know the correct terms. But I thought that was really a really good excuse to get some voluptuous curves in there. And then I thought, oh, jacuzzi, what about a shape? Wouldn't that be a good idea to become like a pot of some sort? And then I thought, well, what am I going to put at the back? Because otherwise it's going to be a bit boring. And I thought, oh, you know, people that are trying to, um, I'm not talking about anything sort of nasty, but just human nature being what it is is if you're admiring fine art or you're admiring fine body or something that is attractive to you, you often will sort of sneak a peek. Um, and I thought, peek a boob. Oh my goodness, perfect name for it because you've got the boobs on the front. And um, so, and I've actually inscribed peek a boob on the side there, you can just get a hint of it. So because it's all water related, I did the inside in uh, sort of different degrees of aqua color really high glossy type sheen on it um, and uh, our lovely snorkel boy without his snorkel this time is on the back of it so I went to town on his eyes the whole concept of your eyes being out on stalks and I see it as he's really admiring her but he's quite shy and he doesn't quite know how to break the ice and have a little chat with her and he just is sort of you're there the person is a thing of beauty and you're drinking in all of this information about their loveliness, but you're shy. And this links in with uh, being autistic as well and having challenges sometimes with social interactions that sometimes it can take you a little bit longer than an average person and um, to sort of build up your courage and, and approach people and start that conversation. So he's there and he's got one sort of arm up as if he's sort of hanging on to the maybe the um grab rail in the pool or whatever something like that um but his body curves around and i gave him a lovely bum that you just want to sort of touch <laughs> because it's so like oh my goodness two ripe peaches absolutely fantastic but i also played around this time because i haven't done a lot of backs of people because I you know I don't see my own back and all the rest of it but I thought right what am I going to do will I try and give him some texture on his back and then I sort of uh, channeled a few characters on tv and films that I've seen I thought right okay I'll have a go and I sort of close my eyes and do it by touch to make sure that he had sort of muscles and the equivalent of a six-pack put on his back um, and yeah, and then his legs sort of went around, but again, the feet are a bit dicey, so I didn't put any feet on him because that works for me. 
anything I can put down as artistic interpretation, as far as I'm concerned, is fair game. And so did the uh, hair colours, she had red hair because when I sort of discovered my identity as a uh, newly single person many years ago, I had red hair. I thought, right, we're going to give her red hair to stand out a little bit. But again, it's mostly about texture. When <laughs> it came out of the film for the second time, complete, and people were looking at it and they thought, have that. And bearing in mind, they sort of held it up sort of to look at it or they were sitting down and it was at eye level. And with that exception, everybody, they looked at it, ran around, oh, well, that's really nice. And then they'd sort of lift it up and they'd look into it. And every single person thought that I had put a part of his anatomy in the inside of the bowl. <laughs> but I hadn't. So they were thinking there was something extra naughty in the bowl. And I thought, well, bringing sort of metaphor for how humans work that uh, particularly in, in the UK because you talk about things sort of on the QT but you're not necessarily talking about them openly but you can't help but sometimes you know having a little sneaky peek and the fact that there's nothing to peek at just you know made me chuckle and um, so you know I've put a bit about that in the blurb on, on my uh, gallery but this one as well I think it's a wasted opportunity if an item just does one thing. So what I've done is I've put the holes sort of around the sides so that I can put a like a nightlight in there, one of those little penny candle things. And then it becomes, if you've ever seen somebody swimming in one of those films with the underwater lights and things, it's a bit like that. The play of the shadows coming out from the gaps make it something that you can use at, in, at night time as well. So next slide please and i think this might be the last one i have a feeling um yeah so this one nothing to do with sex whatsoever this was one i started it was at an environmental fair and the independent living center that i had attended part of that was doing a stand there to just sort of say the sort of things that they did so there was a limited amount of time which was a real good focus for my brain which tends to go all over the place so I took one bit of clay and I literally, I had my fist like this and I molded it around my fist like that. And that's what created that sort of cave-like thing. So I, it sort of reminded me of the conch shells that you used to hold up to your ear and you could hear the sea uh, coming out. And I just love the whole texture of things. And again minimal different colors of blazes but i liked the blue of this because it's sea like but also that mottled gray beigey thing again um because that reminded me of the sand and rock and and all that kind of stuff about the sea and then what i added was you can just see i think at the top you can see a bit of a starfish there's a few starfish around it that i've done in relief on top of the, the main sort of uh, surface and it also reminded me of a cave and I thought it's really protective it all sort of spoke to me as being really protective and being sheltered and being safe but I also thought it reminded me of when you get those big waves that surfers like to just ride on I thought well, that was cool uh, and this one again is dual purpose so I actually created a little groove on the inside so that you could pop one of those night lights in and then there are holes going up through the roof of the cave so that when you put your night light in then the stars sort of come out of the back of it um, so yeah but I love you know this is gonna make me sound really weird but I don't care I just love touching it even though I'm the one that created it I'm still like oh that looks really nice and it's shiny and it's texture and it's, oh, it's gorgeous um, yeah, so, and that one is called A Word in Your Shell Like. Uh, so there you go. Thank you. Larry. That is, that is me. Feel free to feedback or comment or, or whatever, but thanks for listening. Um, and I hope you enjoy them. Oh, thank you so much, Lorraine. That was absolutely brilliant. I love what you're doing. It's great. And, uh, you know, thank you for sharing with us today.